In this lesson, we'll take a look at subsetting of vectors. In other words, getting access to a subset of the elements of a vector, right? That is, when we operate on vectors, we don't always want to operate on all the elements of a vector. We may want to operate on, let's say, the first 10 elements, or we may want to operate on an individual element of the vector, say, the 10th element, or we may want to operate on the elements from the 10th to the 15th element or we may want to operate on the elements of the vector which are less than a certain amount or greater than a certain amount or in general satisfy some condition. Okay, So we need to understand how to access a subset of the vectors and that's what this lesson is going to be talking about. So we learn how to extract the vector element at a given position, extract contiguous vector elements that is elements which are close to each other, extract non-contiguous vector elements and the distinguish between the use of the parentheses and square brackets because both of those uh, when we do subsetting of vectors we'll be using square brackets but we've already seen the use of parentheses for functions I just want to make sure that you're aware of this distinction and you don't make the mistake that people generally make. Let's first take a look at how to access a single element of a vector. So here we've got a vector again it's got the elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and the name of the vector is that and of course we use the C function to create the vector. Now I want to access let's say the third element I can just say dat within square bracket 3. Okay now you might ask a question when you're able to see the vector like this why do you even want to extract the third element why not just see that it is actually 30 right. Uh, now on many occasions you'll be dealing with vectors which are very large and vectors which you may have read from a file from a data file and so on and therefore not all the elements are visible to you up front right so you're going to be let's say you write a program to deal with many different data files so it may read a data file one by one read the first data file process it in some way read the second data file process it in some way and so on so in those cases we don't uh, we don't know what elements are there in the vector and in order to process the vector we may have to access different elements from the vector so uh, so we are accessing the third element of the vector by doing that within square bracket 3 and as I just mentioned uh, in order to subscript or access elements of a vector you use the subsetting operator which is the square bracket. This is different from the parentheses that you use when you supply arguments to functions. Okay, So for example here's the function c and we use the parentheses to supply the arguments that the function c function will operate upon okay so we use parentheses for that purposes uh, that purpose and we are using the square brackets for this purpose you should never mix the two things together okay so that of 3 of course we expect to get the number 30 we get it back note again the square brackets not parentheses okay and 3 of course is the index that we are looking for index being uh, the position within the vector whose element we want. So sometimes we use the term index, sometimes we also use the term subscript to uh, refer to this. Okay, The result in this particular case is a scalar. It's a single element. It's a single element 30. It's not a vector. Okay, Again, as I'm emphasizing, use the square brackets and the parentheses correctly. Min of x, you're using a function and therefore you put the parentheses to supply the arguments of the function okay and when you do that of 3 you're sub subsetting vector so you use the square bracket so be aware of this distinction and don't make the mistake okay now one kind of subsetting of vectors takes place when we access contiguous elements that is elements which are next to each other so for example again I take the same vector 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and I want the elements which are in positions 3 to 5. Okay, So I can say that 3 colon 5. Okay, So it's saying from 3 to 5 uh, sort of visibly resembles the Excel range operator colon. So it looks like that but the meaning is slightly different. Uh, in, in R when you use the colon operator the result is actually a vector. We'll come to that at a later point in time. Okay, so this is how you access contiguous elements. And of course, as we expect, we get 30, 40, 50. Okay, so you can, if they're contiguous, you can use this method. And the result is a vector, of course, because 
it's returning three numbers and therefore or three elements in general and therefore it has to be a vector so the result of this operation dat 3 colon 5 is a vector now this again I would like to point out that the result is being printed on the console because we didn't assign the result to anything we didn't say something is assigned the result of d uh, dat 3 colon 5 right I could have put this result into another variable if I had done that then the system would not have displayed the result because as you know when you assign something to a variable R doesn't display the result when you just compute something and don't assign it to anything then R displays the result on the console that's what has happened here okay so now we are doing something different we are saying that 3 colon 6 right and the sixth element doesn't exist this vector has only five elements okay so what result do you get you get 30 40 50 and na okay na is sort of like a unknown quantity right so when something is unknown r will represent it as na so in this case it's saying the sixth element is unknown so i cannot tell you the result of this operation okay another possibility for r would have been to give you an error saying you know this is wrong you're accessing a non-existent element of the vector but somehow this is the choice they have made to show it as an unknown result okay so na represents a missing value and we'll devote some time later on to talk about na in a little bit more detail so now let's look at accessing non-contiguous elements okay so notice that what we are doing is we are saying that c 2 comma 4 not colon 2 comma 4 now remember c 2 comma 4 we already know from our prior experience that this is nothing but a vector consisting of the elements 2 and 4 okay not 2 3 and 4 because that would have happened if it was colon this is not colon this is just a comma so this is a vector with two elements 2 and 4 and when you use a vector as an index to another vector then you're going to get the elements located at those specified positions right so you're going to get the second element and the fourth element 20 and 40 and that's what you got okay so you can supply a vector as an argument uh, as an index when you're subs subsetting another vector and of course the result is a vector because this has more than one element so you get a vector as a result okay so once again I'm just getting into the anatomy of this command the earlier command so that within square bracket and then we are specifying the elements we want through a vector and the vector is 2 4 okay and therefore you're going to get the elements which are in positions 2 and 4 so here another example so here we are saying C 4 2 5 okay again non-contiguous we want the fourth element the second element and the fifth element and the important point to note here is that the result will have the elements in this specific order so the fourth element is going to come first 40 second element and then the fifth element okay so the order in which you supply the elements of this vector will determine the order of the result right so it's not going to come in the order of the second element fourth element and the fifth element it's going to come in the order that we have specified right here okay so therefore this thing need not necessarily be in order you can supply it in any order you want for your purpose okay the result again is a vector because we are getting multiple elements okay now again till now we have specified the index all the time through literals right you can look at this and see that you want the fourth second and the fifth element or if you go back to our previous slide you can see I want the second and the fourth element right so we have specified it through uh, literals we can specify the index through variables and that is often what we will actually be doing okay so here I'm saying uh, that 10 20 30 40 50 and I'm putting the number 3 in a variable called IND end that's just a variable that I'm creating the name IND is just something I made up I could have called the variable X Y Z elephant anything it's just a variable name I chose to call it end because it is sort of representing an index I could have called it index that would have been a little more 
descriptive right and then I can now say that and within square bracket earlier I had said 3 if you remember I can just say int okay because after all int is 3 and you will get the third element as expected okay so in general indexes can be specified either through variables or through constants okay so again you can do the same thing with vectors I'm creating a vector with the elements 3 and 5 I'm storing it in a variable called VEC vec and then I can say that of VEC okay because VEC happens to be the vector 3 5 this is the same as saying that of C 3 comma 5 it's as if we put C 3 comma 5 right in there except that we've stored it in a variable and then we are using the variable again you'll get the result 30 50 as expected okay and of course still now we have just be subsetting vectors but we have not assigned the result to any variable we can do that so again I consider the same vector and I say w is that of 3 so w will now obviously contain the value 30 right because that of 3 is nothing but the third element so it's 30 w is going to contain the value 30 or I can say w is that of c 3 comma 5 and w will now contain the vector 30 50 because the third element and the fifth element right so till now we did not assign the result to anything we just wrote this expression down and therefore we saw the result on the console now we are not seeing anything on the console when we do the operation of assignment because as I've already told you when you assign something to a variable R remains silent right the only way then to see the result was to actually type out the name of the variable as a command and then you saw the results let's now look at a feature that I consider to be very cool and that is the feature of using negative indexes so we create a vector with the five elements 10 20 30 40 50 60 not five six elements and then we set out an expression like this w is assigned the value of dat of minus 3 so that's what I mean using a negative index okay so what does this mean the meaning of the negative index in R is you want everything other than what you've indicated right so this means I want all elements other than the third element and that's exactly what I get 10 20 40 50 60 30 happens to be the third element and that's got left out okay so that's the idea of using negative indexes you'll find that it's actually very useful in many scenarios you will we'll be using it later for purposes especially when we partition data sets right so we've got a data set we want to take some rows as the training partition and the remaining rows as the test partition that's exactly where this will come into play we'll say minus which means whatever has gone into training other than that I want to put everything into test okay now don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you yet when we come across it actually in the next course it will start making sense okay so you can use negative indexes not just for individual numbers but also for vectors so for example I can say w is that of c minus 3 minus 5 meaning other than the third and fifth element give me everything else you can also state the same thing as minus c 3 comma 5 right after all minus is a unary negation operator what this will turn out to be is a vector minus 3 minus 5 okay so the effect is exactly the same and of course you're going to get the elements other than the third and the fifth element so 10 20 40 60 perfect so that is what the use of negative indexes uh, is beneficial for this completes lesson 1.7 and in this lesson you learned how to extract a vector element at a specific position in a vector which is the third element the fifth element the tenth element and so on and very importantly you learned the distinction between parentheses and square brackets you know that we use parentheses in when we specify functions right so we are calling a function we give the function name and within parentheses we supply the arguments to the function whereas we use square brackets for subsetting of vectors and later you'll see also data frames so within square brackets we indicate the indexes that we are interested in okay so that's the difference between parentheses and square brackets and then we extract elements which are in contiguous positions in a vector which means let's say all the elements from the 10th to the 20th or something like that and we also learned how to extract non-contiguous vector elements by specifying the indexes that we want in the form of a vector 
right? So you'll say, let's say that is your vector, you'll say that, and within square brackets, you'll say C, uh, and then you'll indicate the indexes that you're interested in, and you'll get back only those. So that is how you extract non-contiguous vector elements. And finally, you saw the really cool feature of using negative indexes to specify the indexes that we don't want. Till now, we've been talking about indexes that we do want. Here we are saying, look, give me everything other than these things or other than this thing. So those are all the things that you have learned in this particular lesson. All of these things, of course, are going to be extremely useful because when you're working with data frames, implicitly, you're actually working with vectors, which are the columns of the data frame. And therefore, all of these skills are extremely important.